Hi, this is Rich from Metamolecular. A balanced chemical equation is the first step in many chemistry problems. But the most commonly taught method involves memorizing special rules and making guesses. This video will show you a simple way to balance any chemical equation without the guesswork. You're probably familiar with the method taught in most classes, balancing by inspection. Starting with an equation with no coefficients, pick an element on either side to balance. In this equation, we could try balancing oxygen. Now, we balance hydrogen by adding its coefficients. This method works for very simple reactions, but can be difficult to use with more complicated reactions. Here's an example of an equation that would be extremely difficult to balance by inspection. Go ahead and try it yourself. Unless you're very lucky or already know the answer, it could take a few hours. The trial and error method of balancing chemical equations taught in most classes simply doesn't work for many of the reactions you'll come across. We need something that works every time without guesswork or exceptions. Here I'll describe a single method of balancing chemical equations that balances any chemical equation regardless of complexity, can balance both redox and non-redox equations, and lets you know when an equation is unbalanceable. The only thing you'll need to start using this method is a basic understanding of arithmetic. Although this method is straightforward and reliable, it does require doing some math. Fortunately, if you'd rather skip all that, there's an app that will do it for you. I'll talk about it at the end of this video. To show you how this works, let's try balancing a simple equation. The first step is to write the unbalanced equation without coefficients. Next, prepare a composition table. This is a convenient way to account for all of the elements on each side of the equation. Simplifying the composition table gives a matrix. If you're not familiar with matrices, don't worry. I'll be working a couple of examples so you can see what's going on. Our goal is to convert the composition matrix into an equivalent matrix having ones along the diagonal and zeros above and below the diagonal. We can do this with two operations. First, dividing all the numbers in row A by two. Next, dividing all the numbers in row B by two. Doing so gives this matrix, which is said to now be in reduced row echelon form. In other words, we have ones along the diagonal and zeros above and below. The next step is to augment this matrix by adding enough rows to make a square. Because I have three columns and only two rows, I need to add one row like this. The row is filled to make a diagonal containing ones and zeros. This last matrix is called an augmented matrix. The next step is to invert this augmented matrix. Here's how. Expand the augmented matrix from the previous step by placing a square diagonal matrix with only ones and zeros directly to the right. Next, reduce this new matrix. We need to do two things. First, we need this one half to become zero. This can be done by subtracting from B one half of each number in the bottom row C. Next, we need this one to become zero. This can be done by subtracting from row A each number in row C. Remember, add and subtract all the numbers in each row. Doing these steps gives a new matrix. The right hand side is a special matrix called the inverse. We'll use the inverse to do the last step. To assign coefficients, take the right hand column of the matrix inverse and lay the numbers out in a row, starting from the top and working down. Next, multiply every number by the smallest number needed to remove all fractions. In this case, the number is two. We now have three numbers. The left two have a negative sign, indicating these are the coefficients for reactants. The last number is positive, indicating that this is a product coefficient. The last step is to assign coefficients from left to right using the opposite of any negative numbers. The previous example used some matrix operations. There are only three of them you'll need to know, and they're pretty simple. First, in any row we can multiply each number by the same number. Second, we can add a multiple of any row to any other row. Finally, any two rows can be exchanged. That's all there is to it. Now let's look at a more complicated example. We begin by filling out the equation's composition table. 
using a number to indicate the count of each element type. Keeping the numbers only gives the composition matrix. Elementary row operations are used to convert the composition matrix into its diagonal form. The first goal is to place ones along the diagonal and clear all non-zero rows below it. We start by getting a one in the correct position of the second row. To place a non-zero value in the third column of row C, exchange rows C and D. Next, clear the non-zero values under the second and third columns. Next, clear the leading one from column E. The matrix now has ones across the diagonal. We've cleared the non-zero values below the diagonal. The next goal is to clear the non-zero values above the diagonal. Four operations on rows A through D give a matrix in reduced row echelon form. Next, this matrix is augmented and inverted. Adding one row to the bottom of the previous matrix gives a six by six square matrix. Attaching a second matrix to the right with ones along the diagonal is the first step in inverting it. Treating this new matrix as a single unit, perform a series of operations to clear all off diagonal values. Be sure to apply your calculations across the entire row of 12 cells. The right hand side of the resulting matrix is the matrix inverse from which coefficients can be drawn. Reading the right hand column of the inverted matrix from top to bottom gives this sequence of numbers. To eliminate fractions, multiply each by seven. Coefficients for each reactant and product can now be read directly. Notice how we never had to guess to find the correct coefficients to balance this equation. You may have noticed a shortcut we could take to avoid the matrix inversion step. Here's the augmented matrix again. If we only added one row during the augmentation step, we can actually read the fractional coefficients directly from the right-hand column of this matrix. Reading from top to bottom gives the fractional coefficients. Multiplying through by seven to remove fractions, then taking the absolute value of each number, allows us to assign coefficients directly. In some cases, you may need to add more than one row to augment the reduced composition matrix. A future video will show you what to do when this happens. This method can also be applied to equations involving charge. In this example, we account for charge in the last row of the composition table. Notice how the numbers added to this row can be either positive or negative, depending on the sign of the charge. Reducing, augmenting, and inverting the composition matrix gives a new matrix from which coefficients can be pulled. Fractions are eliminated by multiplying through by six. Occasionally, you'll run into an equation that's unbalanceable. Fortunately, it's easy to tell when this is happening. A reduced composition matrix that is square and consists of a diagonal of ones is unbalanceable. The equation can only be balanced by adding reagents or products. I've described a systematic method for balancing any chemical equation. Given a bit of practice, the steps are easy to learn by anyone familiar with basic arithmetic. Begin by building the composition matrix for the equation. Then, reduce the composition matrix with row operations. Augment the reduced composition matrix and invert the result. Finally, assign coefficients by reading the right-hand column of the inverted matrix. Although no step is particularly difficult, this method does require a lot of arithmetic. Fortunately, an app is available that can do these calculations for you. ReactionMate is an app that uses the method described in this video to balance chemical equations. Just add your reactants and products, the rest is calculated automatically. ReactionMate handles even the most complicated chemical equations easily. You can download a copy of ReactionMate for your iPhone or iPad from the App Store.